Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. Today I'm working on uh, projects looking at some of my sweaters that are the more difficult of the sweaters to rug hook with. So I'm trying to figure out how to solve problems using specifically fair aisle sweaters, which are traditionally so, so, so pretty. Um, but these can be the most problematic sweaters to try to rug hook with. And I'm going to show you a way around that so that you can use sweaters that are special for you or heirloom sweaters, kids sweaters, grandkids sweaters, sweaters that have moth holes or that you don't fit anymore. All this stuff should be used and can be used. So let's look at why Fair Isle is a thing. For example, this is a Fair Isle sweater and the Fair Isle, right, refers to like the pattern, right? It's like a, it's like a horizontally um, knitted pattern. And it's made up of a lot of individual threads on the back that if you're looking at these and you're thinking, if I'm gonna cut through these threads, that's gonna be a big problem as far as the piece wanting to stay together. So can we even use these kinds of prints that are super pretty and colorful for hooking projects? You can, but you just have to be a bit thoughtful about how you're gonna attack it. So my biggest tip for you, whether you like this idea or not, is to go with a not traditionally rug hooking backing and to think about going with a latch hook backing, right? So I say this all the time because it works. So pros for using a latch hook backing, you don't need a frame. You don't need a $200, $400, $1,200 rug hooking frame. You just put it on the table like this. It's super stiff. Another pro is this is at more of the big box craft stores, right? So you can get a hold of this. You can also get latch hook backing like at thrift stores like Savers or Goodwill or whatever. You can find pieces of it and it works. Comes in different gauges. I usually work three holes to an inch. Um, it doesn't really matter. The point is with this backing as opposed to a traditional rug hooking backing, you can work in wider, thicker pieces. And if you're gonna be working with tricky sweaters that want to play you, you need a larger gauge, right? Because if I cut this stuff up too fine and narrow, it's gonna atomize in my hands while I'm trying to work with it. So what I do when I come to a sweater, like for example, this is a beautiful fair aisle. It's a children's sweater. I got it at a charity store. Um, I put it through the washer dryer maybe two, three times on high, hot, which is what I do. And it crossed the line between fulling, F-U-L-L, -L, and felting. And felting makes it impossible at this point to rug hook with. In so when I've put it through and it's too hot and it's felted too much, it's a little bit tricky to work with. But I can still work with it in this format. And what I'm going to do with any of my Fair Isle sweaters or any of my sweaters in general, I'm just going to cut off the parts that I don't really need, like the cuffs and the hem and stuff like that. And then I'm going to come into the body of it right along the seams like this. Right? I don't want to make extra lines and extra cuts. I want as much of it as I can. I come right along the seams like this and I can just cut pieces off like this. And then I can just cut strips, right? And I'm going to use my scissors. I'm not going to use any fancy expensive cutters. I don't, I got enough problems without breaking those cutters. So I'm just going to cut off strips like this, right? And then it's just a question of, is it going to work? Right? I was just sampling this and I know it works. I'm using latch hook backing. I'm using a latch hook as opposed to a um, rug hook. And a latch hook, if you remember, has a toggle. So I tape the toggle down, right? Because that is going to play me if that keeps, you know, popping up. So I taped it down with just like masking tape, scotch tape, and I'm going to go about it the same way I would any rug hooking project. I'm going to start with my tail up and I'm going to put the head down there and pull up loops. Now, what height? Well, whatever height I want them, right? It's my rug and I'm making decisions uh, as I go. But it is tricky working with latch hook backing for sure because it's not on a frame. Your hands have to get used to feeding it, right? And I'm struggling with that right now because I don't usually work in the middle of it but you can see it is gonna pull up some really beautiful, big, fat loops. And wouldn't you think it'd be falling apart and atomizing in my hand? Well, sometimes it does, but this time it's not. And if I were gonna play with a different one, let's play with a different one for a minute. This one's coming up a treat, right? This is the same material. So this is super durable. This is this cut up sweater that is completely felted, that I ruined in the wash, that I thought the jig was up. That one is coming out great. Let's look at this one because this is a tricky one that hasn't been washed yet. So I always like to cut the hem off together just in case I can think of a clothing project to work that in. And I'm coming right up the seam again. 
And I'm just wondering, I'm not going to do too much with this one because if it atomizes in my hands, then I might want to run it through the wash on hot and the dryer on hot and see if I can give it a bit more body integrity structure so that I can hook with it. But let's see in this format if I'm able to hook with one that's this thready and difficult. It's always going to be different from project to project. And my go-to thought is always, well, if it's fallen apart, I'm going to put it in the washer dryer. And if it comes out of the washer dryer and it's still falling apart in my hands, I'm going to put it through again. And it is coming through just fine. So you can see you really can play with these sweaters that you thought were all done and work with them in this latch hook with latch hook backing format.